June's birthday, excuse me. I couldn't read it. June Herzog's birthday. And then the altar flowers are in celebration of Steve and Diana Locke's 49th wedding anniversary. So we congratulate both and wish June a happy birthday. My apologies for not being able to read this morning. This week we have our vacation Bible school starting with our Rocky Railway summer, super summer adventure. This is a once a week VBS that begins on Wednesday of this week from 5.30 to 8 p.m. We do have a snack supper provided. Uh, hear that it's going to be delicious pizza every week. So that's at one time that you can get some pizza. And as for preschoolers through fifth grade, adults must re remain with the preschoolers that are registered. You can still register. There's a link online. Uh, you can get to that through the website and on Facebook. And also there are some registration forms and information forms there in the narthex as you leave today. Understand they still need some toilet paper rolls for the needed supplies uh, and brown rolls of butcher paper and large cardboard boxes that they're creating a train depot. They'll be doing that today, so I think they've got enough of the large cardboard boxes. This Thursday, June 10th at 2 p.m., the Women of Freedoms will be meeting in their usual room in the Activity Center, which is the Borman Council Room. So they're going to have a special program by GVBC. So if you are a woman, please join us at 2 p.m. this Thursday. Our Rural Life Sunday is next week, so we will be at the Red Barn. Where will we be at 10 a.m. next week? Yes. All right. So we'll be there at 10 a.m. for our Rural Life Sunday. If you haven't joined us before for this, please join us this time. It's a big treat. We do celebrate the fact that we still live in a rural community and we celebrate all things rural and it's a no better place. We've had it out there at the Big Red Barn for the last several years and we also have a cookout that will follow. We'll have the exhibits will be open, there'll be games and there will be a dunking booth So for Pastor Dave. So get your pitching arms ready for that. 10 a.m., don't come here. Come to the Big Red Barn on Cordova Road and join us for that special time of worship and fellowship. Also, coming back June 18th will be our fish fry. It's coming back and there'll be drive through only this time. Begin serving at 5 p.m. until the food is gone. So please join us for that. Tell all your friends and family to come out and enjoy this delicious meal. I'm like really windy up here, sorry. Um, come out and enjoy this time together. Uh, it is also a fundraiser, which helps with a lot of the ministries of the church and the outreach. Uh, plates are $12, and they include fried fish, french fries, hush puppies, and slaw, and there will be hot dogs available uh, for $3. And desserts, of course, at $2, and they can always use donated desserts. Sunday Fun Day, which will be coming up June 27th. At the church, this is for a grade six through eight. Rising sixth graders may join us. And there will be kickball, slip and slide, inflatable water slide, and also a mud bog gaga pit. So that's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Not doing that, but watching them get muddy. So it'll be a lot of fun. So encourage sixth and eighth graders, they can sign up online. We do have an Instagram account now, Freedoms Church Youth or Freedoms Youth so they can sign up on there or on our Facebook page. A lot happening, and we are tickled pink over that. It is a lot going on as we re-enter into the life of the church. So if you're able, please stand as we sing together our opening hymn, I'll Worship the King.
Today here at church, we approach the table of grace, and later in our service, a time at, for communion. If you're at home today and watching live, you can prepare your communion elements as we share together in just a few moments. And as we do here at Freedom's Church, on the time of communion Sundays, we recite our statement of faith. Please say this with me. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, we believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, Jesus rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's sing our praise hymn this morning, our praise song, which is Open Up the Heavens. Forgiveness, let us in silence confess our failings and acknowledge our part 
in the pain of the world. Let us respond before Lord God, God with, with the people, people of God. God we, we confess to turning, turning away from God in the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to grow in love. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear these words of assurance. God is with us, and God loves us. And there is nothing that can ever do to change that fact about God. Nothing we've ever done, nothing that we are doing, nothing we will ever do changes that love for us. That gives us great hope and joy and grace in all of life and certainly peace. May there be peace in your life at this very moment and in all of your days to come. The peace of God be with you all. And now, my friends, let us now share and sing the Gloria Patri, Glory to the Father. Through the confession of our sins, our shortcomings, failings before a God, with the right heart and right spirit, God forgives us right there, right then, and always. And that is great hope and assurance, my friends, and may that give you great peace today. Let us now share and pass the peace of Christ one another from where you're standing. Turn it around, give a, a wave. You can handshake, you can nod, a heart tap, or just a wink. Whatever it is, for those at home today, peace be with you all. You may be seated. Have them, have them stand between us. Okay. I'd like to call the Jerzyskis and Cherry to come forward to stand with us. This morning we have the opportunity to commission this family as uh, they are going on a mission trip through Bold Hope. And we're doing this as part of our children's moment today to commission a family as they travel to Belize. Y'all leave next Saturday, is that right, June 12th? And um, so we wanted to recognize that today. I put um, a slide up there that has some pictures. I was on their website, and it's boldhope.org, connect, empower, and transform. Uh, it looks like a wonderful organization, and they really promote family mission trips. And I've asked them when they return if they would do a presentation for us. Um, and I know that's the favorite thing to do is to talk in front of people, but we'll help them through that. But pictures always tell the story. So I wanted to recognize Cassie and Barry and their sons, Trip Collier and Ledger, and of course Cassie's mom, uh, Cherry, uh, Barry's brother, Luke. Is that right? He's going with you all. And then also uh, your mom, Joan. So it'll be a family affair. And then also uh, Justin and Hillary Jones, and hopefully their two daughters are waiting on their passports to be expedited. Um, and so hopefully we'll pray for them. They have been in our church a few times visiting. And so we wanted to commission them today. I do have a few little gifts, or whatever you want to call that, to remind you that we're praying for you. Barry, I have this for you. We'll bracelet to wear and for your brother all right and then um mom i have a little bracelet for you to wear across 
Kathy, and then guys, I have one that says a rock that you can take with you. It says faith. He does? All right, that's good. Believe, and then hope. How about that? And just a reminder that your church is praying for you all uh, while you're there. You can take them with you, like, or not. But just to know that we have you and our prayers, and you're going, representing us. Um, there in Belize as you do the work we know that country even though it is a tourist de destination has a high percentage of poverty about 42% of their population lives in poverty uh, and so you're definitely the work you'll do in helping to uh, do work through a church there doing some ministry uh, like vacation Bible school type stuff ministry in the community and then I think you may be doing some indoor plumbing uh, there, so that's going to be needed very much, um, and so we are so grateful that you're going to do that, and we wanted to do a special commissioning for you, so I will begin that for us. Today, we gather together as neighbors to send you out to other neighbors. We celebrate that we are connected to each other across different places and pray that those bonds will grow stronger through this mission experience. We you, you are going on a mission in which God sends you to be love in the midst of others. We rejoice that you will meet new neighbors in person and work together with them to embody God's love in that community. And we promise to go with you in spirit and prayer. We commit to receive you and to be open to new ideas ourselves when you return to this community empowered for long-term involvement and change toward a just and loving world for all. May the love of God and neighbor be made real and share of this experience. We pray that God will keep this family strong mentally, physically, and spiritually, grant them safe travels, energy, and enthusiasm, and an ability to be flexible when plans change. Holy God, we ask that you bless this mission project, the team members and leaders, those they serve, and the team members' families back home. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity in which they will actively work in a meaningful way in your wonderful kingdom. Amen. Well, we celebrate that with you all. Why don't we give them a round of applause to thank them for doing that. <laughs> Can't wait to hear all about it. <laughs> guys, y'all do a great job. I know. You do awesome. Love you guys. And Steve, for the children, that is something as families we can go and serve together. I think that is the most meaningful way. Uh, you'll see each other grow as you share in that trip together. Um, and so we are definitely excited to hear about that after. So, children, that is the way in which we know that God loves us so much, and so do we. In our prayer time today, we want to be in prayer for the family of Jerry Hudson, um, for Teresa, his wife. There was a beautiful service yesterday held, and so many people there on, on their property and it was just a beautiful service of celebrating his life and remembering him. There was lots of tears and laughter. And so we pray for Teresa and all the family, his daughter, his son, uh, all the extended family in our community as we grieve this loss of a wonderful person. Let's go to the Lord in prayer with other things that are on our hearts, other people, and then I will close us in prayer. Oh, holy God, thank you so much for your love and your grace that is with us. We ask for healing for those that struggle this day with grief and loss, those that deal with difficult situations in their lives. And we pray for people around this world as they seek you and their lives, as they seek to grow in faith. We are grateful for opportunities, for mission opportunities in which people can travel 
from country to country and within our own country. We ask for guidance and knowledge and wisdom to be imparted, and above all, your love. Thank you, O oh God, for this place in which we worship you, for this community, this body of Christ, as we serve you. May we be bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we sing our offertory hymn this morning, we do have nursery for those children that are five and under. Ms. Lauren is there in the back to greet you if you would like to go to the nursery at this time. And I'll ask you to stand as we sing our offertory hymn this morning. I've asked our musicians to play it through once. This is a Baptist hymn that I love the words to. And I wanted to share this with you this morning. We'll learn it together. Um, it is one in which it speaks of how we give of ourselves, our time, our talent, and our money. What we have, we give to God. Whether that be money, whether that be our time, our talents, going on mission trips, various ways in which we give to others as a representative of God in our lives. We're not yet able to pass the offering plates, but we do have our offering box. It's there for you if you want to give an offering as you leave this place this morning, as you go out these doors to serve the world. Just know that they are indeed blessed gifts. You are blessed as offerings of God. Let us respond through our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him. Oh, it's beautiful to hear you sing. 
And thank you, musicians. Uh, I thank our music every Sunday and the work that they do uh, to help bring us a wonderful worship service. And before the gospel reading today, uh, it, things lately have just encouraged my life and my heart and soul of a number of things that have been happening. Uh, it's been great to do things like weddings. Those are beautiful events, and we've done several weddings uh, this fall, uh, excuse me, this spring. And, and more on the way. I think that's just fantastic uh, today. And happy birthday, June. And June, June cut her own birthday flowers today to bring to church. I think that's marvelous. So thank you. They're beautiful. I love flowers um, and beautiful people as well, June. And a lot to celebrate in your life today. Steve and Diana Locke, uh, happy 49th uh, anniversary. I think that's marvelous. And just to let you know, Diana, that Steve told me before the service today that for your 50th, anniversary, he's taking you on a world cruise in your own private yacht. Did you know that, Diana? Amazing. Or did I hear that right? I'm not sure if I heard that exactly right, but happy, happy anniversary to you. And you guys, amazing. You've done these trips before, understand, and thank you for going again and in all the, the challenges that you're facing, but you guys will have the strength to do it and what a wonderful witness you will be sharing as brothers and sisters in Christ there. We'll be praying for you each and every day. Guys, when you go through TSA, take the rocks out of your pockets, okay? And just gently show them what you have if you take them there. But you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So many good things happen in life of the church. You saw the announcements earlier. I'm excited. We're having vacation Bible school again. We haven't had in two years. You know how hard it is to do something you haven't done for two years because you can't remember what you did before. And so we're trying to remember what all did we do last time? But we have great volunteers. If you're wanting to donate some things still for Vacation Bible School, if you have questions, Vicki Wilson, the director, she's over there right now at Activity Center getting things prepared. They'll be working this afternoon. Go see her today. In fact, if, if the, even if you don't have anything to uh, donate or can't be here, go and just give her a word of encouragement. Uh, these, works, these folks are working hard because they want to make sure that everything is done well, and I appreciate that. It's hard to re-entry sometimes into all the things that we're doing. And we're doing women's events, uh, youth events, children's events. Yes, next week we're at uh, the Big Red Barn just down the road. Who knows where that is? Do you know where the Big Red Barn is? Most of you know, so uh, bring a friend next week, and we'll have somebody here to... Tell people that they need to go to Big Red Barn. If they come here, that's okay. And yes, indeed, there will be the Pastor Dave Dunking booth. Now, depending on the offering next Sunday morning, determines how much I charge per throw to me to not be into the water. Just keep that in mind. And yes, I came up with that idea. Uh, and yes, I came up with the idea of the Gaga Pit Mud Bog game that we're going to do. And Pastor Sonia thinks she's not involved with that at this moment, but we will see. All that is to say, we're getting back into to some things, and it feels good, does it not, just to do some things, and we'll keep on those things as well. Now, our gospel reading, my friends, is from the Gospel of Mark. These are the stories of Jesus Christ from the Gospel writers, writers and today is Mark 3, verses 20 through 35. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he, Jesus, has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he is Beelzebul. And by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. And he called them, and he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. And he said, how can Satan cast out Satan. If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But by his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, Jesus says, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit 
can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of the eternal sin, for they have said, the scribes, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, Jesus said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. May God bless the reading of God's word today. It's about doing the will of God for Jesus and our lives. Now, this is an interesting story, is it not? And here's the context of it. Jesus now has been called into the ministry uh, at the time he's been baptized. He had the time of, of, of temptation with Satan in the wilderness. And now he's out performing these miracles, and he's just called his 12 disciples here in the Gospel of Mark. And he's been doing some amazing things, including the casting out of demons and what were to be possessed people. And it's caused quite a stir there in Capernaum on this uh, west side of the Sea of Galilee. And people are hearing about it now. The rumors are spreading, and someone has even ran to Jerusalem to tell the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the temple leaders what was going on in Capernaum. And so they have a delegation that goes to Capernaum from Jerusalem and to find out what's going on. And it's just an amazing sight. I don't know if even my reading of this gospel message gives it the full impact of what's happening with this. It's amazing. And now people are amazed but are also frightened who is this Jesus of Nazareth, and what is he doing? And even his own family now is wondering just who he is and what he is doing as well. And so there are crowds have been gathering, and so that they could not even eat. Have you heard that before in these stories? Big crowds, no food, but they want to see and hear Jesus. And the family now has been hearing this, and they come out, and literally they want to restrain him because people are saying, Jesus has gone out of his mind. Isn't that an amazing statement? How many times have you had a conversation with someone or you have observed someone doing something and you thought they have gone completely out of their mind? Have you experienced that before? Yes, you have, so have I. And I've had that experience on the other side. Pastor Dave, have you lost your mind? And sometimes I think, I probably have at this point in my life, losing something a part of my mind. Well, that's kind of a harsh accusation, is it not? To say someone has lost their mind. Back in the time of Jesus, that was a harsh, harsh accusation. One you want to avoid because if you were made known to have lost your mind, you were cast away outside of people. Oh, this guy, this woman, this person is crazy, and let's just put them away somewhere because they might be demon-possessed in their craziness, and no one wanted to deal with that. No one wanted to deal with that. I know you've heard the saying, and I've heard it too growing up, like in the South, you know, we don't hide our crazy, we put it right there in the living room or the front porch for everybody to see. Have you heard that statement before? We don't hide our crazy. Well, we kind of do hide our craziness to a point. Because some days we might think we're just crazy ourselves in the ways we're trying to deal and handle things of the world. And sometimes, too, I think people of faith, the rest of the world might think we're just crazy people here. What are you doing? I understand that. And they made a harsh accusation again. Not that he was lost his mind, he might be crazy, but he is, as Jesus Nazareth, is possessed himself by Beelzebul. Now here's where that name comes from. It's one of the names used for Satan in the Bible. It literally means this, Lord of the Flies. Did you know that? This is exactly where it comes from, Lord of the Flies. This, this, this name. And it's an exercise now that Jesus is engaging with, with the scribes. These religious leaders have come from Jerusalem. It's like the delegation from Washington has shown up in your hometown. 
ex investigating something or someone. And his own people now, his family, are thinking, oh my gosh, what's wrong with him? And now Jesus has to participate in something that is very, very hard to do, that is convincing the inconvincible. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and they're just not going to be convinced of your side of the story regardless of the conversation? Have you had that conversation before? Of course you had. You had that early on in your life with your parents. They were having that conversation with you, if you recall. Oh my goodness, this child cannot be convinced of anything. What are we going to do? And we use terms like hard-headed or hard-hearted. The Old Testament uses a wonderful word called stiff necks. Have you, did you know that? It was the term that Moses described the people of God to God. Dear God, I can't do anything with these people because of their stiff necks. That means they're not listening, they're not obeying, they're not doing anything that needs to be done. It seems in our world this day, today, oh my goodness, are we engaged in countless and fruitless and just unending conversations of convincing the inconvincible. I might ask, what are we perhaps unable to be convinced of in life? And Jesus is having to do this. And here's what he was now being, being accused of. One is this. We can say about Jesus, he's not crazy. Have you ever had to spend some time in your life proving that you're not crazy to somebody else? Have you sat down at the dinner table it said, oh my goodness, I'm not crazy. A business meeting, at school, at church, outside, in the community. And sometimes you have to spend some time just convincing others, and maybe even yourself, that you're not crazy. I understand that. Jesus has to do that too. Yes, the Son of God has to spend some time convincing others that he's not crazy. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? That's the story of Jesus that we have today. And this, he's not crazy and he's not possessed. Can, I just think the whole thing is fascinating. This is Jesus Christ with people that he knows and his family, including the squad from Jerusalem, has to convince them that he's not crazy, not possessed. I think this is valuable for us. This is why. If Jesus had to endure that, we probably have to endure that as well at some points in our lives. We're not crazy, and no, the devil is not in our lives, although it might seem that way sometimes. But he did this. He convinced them that this is the thing that Jesus was, is, will be for us too, and that he was just being in God's spirit. Just being in God's spirit. And sometimes just being God's spirit will set us apart so differently from the rest of the world. The world may seem like we're crazy and we're possessed because they can't see the reality and the truth behind it. And how Jesus does this, masterful, creative, wonderful, and he speaks the truth, but the truth in love which is something I'm still trying to do today. Oh, I can speak what I think is truth, but do I always speak it in love as what we're called to do? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth. I am the truth. And you can hear my words and trust my words. And he tells them a parable. He says, no, I'm not here on behalf of Satan. And here's an interesting story about Satan. Many people, many religious people seem, seem to spend most of their religious time in life trying to avoid Satan instead of coming to God. Let me say that again. So many religious people in life spend so much of religious time, effort, energy, thoughts, trying to avoid Satan instead of simply coming to God. You know what I'm talking about. Satan this, devil that, tempted this, oh, we got to run from this and be aware. I get all that. But here is the point that Jesus makes, is this. We don't have to be afraid of this Satan because this Satan, this devil, this Beelzebub, has been defeated by Jesus Christ. And so many of us do not see that or experience that. 
Satan has no power over you. The only power that Satan can have over you is the little devils in your mind telling you falsehoods, non-truths, lies about yourself and the world. And Jesus can overcome that in the Spirit of God. Thanks be to God. In the Old Testament, Satan and God were kind of almost together sometimes. You remember the story of Job? Go back and see Job. Job was this righteous, upright person, blameless in God's sight. It had many possessions, lots of land and animals and family, children. It has a lot of things. And Satan says to God one day, I'm going to go and, and I'm going to convince Job to turn Job's back on you, O oh God. And Satan gives it his best shot. And oh my goodness, the bad things that happened to poor old Job had caused none of it on himself. This adversary shows up and the bad things that happen. It turns out to be good in the end. But it's a story of this, is that we cannot to be so much afraid in our lives of things that we may hear about Satan and devils and demons and all this stuff because Jesus Christ has conquered all of that. The very moment that Jesus rose from the grave, all of that changed. Why are we afraid of that? That's the great story of Jesus when he raises Lazarus from the dead. If you remember that story, before Jesus even goes to the cross. And Jesus says, it's life, God's life in which I want you to know about and to live it strongly and fully and not be afraid. Yes, use your wisdom, use your smarts, use your brains. But God wants us to live. And the story it says a kingdom divided against itself will not stand. How can you even make this illogical argument? If I'm here on behalf of Satan and working for Satan, well, then Satan is not going to divide his own kingdom. That doesn't make any sense at all. And yet Jesus was probably talking to them directly as well, saying, you brigade from Jerusalem, you're like Satan's yourself coming down here, making these false accusations, trying to stir up bad things with these people, do you see yourselves with who you really are and your version of your kingdom will become divided and cannot stand? That's the parable. That is the parable. Let us not be divided, my friends. Oh my goodness, there is so much in this world that can divide us if we allow it. That'll be another sermon for another day, but this little caveat to hear this. I'm usually the person that gets invited to a political rally one time. I'm never invited back. It doesn't matter if it's Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, Green Party, No Party, whatever party you want, I usually get maybe invited once and not a second time. Why? I've got some troubling news for you. I don't like any of them. I really don't. I don't. I understand it. I get it. Friends, I walked the hallways of the United States Senate 30, 40 years ago with one of the most staunchest Republicans ever to serve in Senator Strom Thurmond's office of South Carolina. That was during Ronald Reagan's first term as president. And we, in my little snooty college kid guys, we ruled the world at that time. We had our own office in the Capitol. Yes, Senate Pro Tim Thurman, our own office in the Capitol. And we rode the elevators with all these big wigs, including, at the time, another senator by the name of Biden. I delivered to his office one day a big load of a basket of peaches on behalf of Strom Thurmond of South Carolina. I'll never forget that day. But here's my point. My point is this. I'm here to express one thing. I want everyone to know that we are here to love God and love neighbor. Those aren't my words, by the way. Guess whose words those are? Take a guess. This crazy, demon-possessed person in Capernaum that day said those words. The ultimate command to follow me, love God and love neighbor. Period. There. And any time, any time I'm going to be a witness 
of someone, something, something that does not reflect ultimately the love of God and neighbor, I'm likely to say something about it. Call me crazy. Call me possessed. Guess what? I'm in good company with that, with Jesus Christ. Here's the thing. We're all family. Jesus says, Jesus, outside your mother and your family. Remember, Jesus had brothers and sisters. Jesus had family. Jesus, your family is outside and they're calling for you. Now, this is not just, you know, uh, he's not getting a text message on his phone. Oh, by the way, your family's outside. No, this has some strong implications. Jesus, your mother is outside looking for you and they are very, very worried about you. They think you're crazy. You better come see them now. And what does Jesus do? Jesus, in this most wonderful response, does not buy into the anxiety of the people or his family one time. He maintains this non-anxious presence in the wonderful and beautiful spirit of God. And he says to them, I've got some news for you. Take a look around. And all of these people who follow me and listen to me, they are my brothers and my sisters and my mother in Christ. You see, at this time, the Joseph is no longer on the scene. Joseph there at the stable, and Joseph who was there when Jesus was 12, now there is no more Joseph. Perhaps has passed away at this point. But his family now goes beyond this new family of Jesus Christ and to those who will follow him. And here is where this really really hits home. Jesus says, whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The will of God. I think it's both very easy to understand the will of God, but it's also sometimes hard to put that into practice, the will of God. And we have this, and we recite it every, every Sunday that we're here as a part of our Lord's prayer, this ultimate prayer. When the disciples came to Jesus, said, teach us how to pray, and he teaches them what we call the Lord's Prayer. A part of what he says is this, thy will, God, be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will through us, thy will is done on earth as in heaven. Some people are simply waiting to go to heaven to be a part of God's will. I'll just endure my time on earth. I'll bide my time. I'll hide. I'll escape. I won't engage on earth because the earth can be a bad and harmful and just weird place at times. I'll stick to myself. I'll wait till I get to heaven. Okay, I get that. Except for that's not what we're called to do. If that was simply the case, there never would have been a Jesus to come to earth and begin with. God would say, okay, you're on your own, but you'll get to heaven if you believe and do some things. Jesus says the prayer is this. We're to be about doing God's will now, on earth, now, as it is in heaven, now, and then forever to be. That is your hands, your feet, your voices, your mind, this church to be about God's will each and every day above anybody else's will on earth. That's the point. That is the point. Can we do this? Can we do this above anything else? My fear is this, to be told that so many other things now are demanding our loyalties, our allegiances, our time, our effort, our money, our minds, and our hearts that might not be the will of God. That might not be the will of God. I'll finish th with this today and trying to do the will of God as we approach the table of grace. I don't, I don't cast stones at people. I try not to be judgmental. I try to be inclusive as I can. I even get in trouble with some of my more liberal theology and minister friends because I don't always subscribe to what they want to do or think because I want to say to them too, look, I understand where you're coming from, but I see it in a different way. 
because first and foremost, I want this, I want to strive for this in my life, to love God and to love neighbor. And any time I don't see that happening, I'm going to be resistant. I'm trying not to be crazy and possessed about it, but sometimes it's not how we come across to some people. But that's what I want to do. Because our world today, if this is my news flash today for the world, it is this. Our world today desperately, desperately, desperately needs to know and to live and the love of God and love of neighbor. My friends, if you're looking for ways to change the world, try that one. Have we not tried so many other things? Everybody wants to rule the world. Why not try to serve? Why not let go of some things? Why not strive every day to do the will of God by simply this, everything you do, everything you say, and your attitudes, this first, this day and every day, I want to strive to increase my love for God and my love for neighbor. You try that, oh my goodness, your world changes. And then so does that suddenly the world, the people around them. Try that. Try that. All oh, the kind of conversations we could engage in if we did that. I'm hoping we can be that as a church. This day and all the days that God leads us to be here. Let's pray together. Oh, holy God, I certainly hope and pray that we do not remain unconvinced, inconvincible, of your grace, of your love, of your mercy, of your saving knowledge in Jesus Christ. Perhaps we can lessen the hardness of our hearts and our minds, that we can listen, that we can receive, and that we can change our lives. And in those moments, we may seem, well, kind of crazy ourselves. I pray that your spirit comes to guide us and renew us and to give us hope and strength and courage for this day and all of our days to come. In Christ we pray, amen. Our, com our communion hymn today, as we now prepare our hearts and minds and souls for communion, is here. Oh, my Lord, I see you face to face. It's a beautiful communion hymn. Let us stand and sing this together.
make sure that if you do not have your communion elements, uh, you have Kyle coming down the aisle, so make sure that you do have these elements. We gather as a community of faith. The first Sunday of each month, we practice communion as we remember what Christ has done for us. And Christ in the upper room with his disciples before he would be arrested and then put to death the next day, he would share in the Passover supper with his disciples, yet he would speak words that were different. He would take the bread and he would break it. And he would say, this bread represents my body broken for you, so whenever you eat of this bread, you do so in remembrance of me. And he would also take the cup, the cup filled with the fruit of the vine, and he would say, this cup represents my blood shed for all, the sins of all. This is the cup of the new covenant. So whenever you drink of this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. Pastor Dave, will you pray our prayers? Let's pray together. O Lord of God, just as the disciples met with Jesus in the upper room so many years ago, we meet now with Jesus in the way of your Holy Spirit, the Spirit that speaks to us and guides us and joins us now. And I pray that we are indeed united together in our hearts and our minds and our souls the way that Jesus wanted his disciples to be united. And a way of demonstrating that was through this, this Eucharist, this table of grace, this communion of Lord's Supper. In Christ we pray. Amen. So if you're able to take a little wafer from the top part. This is the bread, the body of Christ. Take, eat, and remember. The cup of Christ. Take, drink, and remember. Amen. Let us stand together as we sing our closing song. Every, and all said, Amen. Thank you. 
is so great to see you all here today. The Lord is with you. The Lord loves you. I am with you, and I love you no matter what, every, every single day. Remember, a vacation Bible school starts Wednesday night. I'm excited about that. You can still register online. There are also some flyers out back. Pick up one of those. Invite your friends. Go over and see Vicki today if you have something you would like to, to help her with or say to her. Remember, next Sunday, we're out at the Big Red Barn at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a great time of service, worship, a luncheon. You don't have to bring anything for the lunch. Just bring yourself and a friend, and the exhibits will be open along with the museums. That'll be just a great day. A lot of things to look forward to in the life of, of the church. And certainly you guys go with our blessings this week as well, certainly. Friends, as we now go into our lives, our very parts of the world, I pray that each and every day we'll strive to live simply, love generously, serve faithfully, speak truthfully, pray daily, and leave everything else to God. Amen. Mm -hmm.